How's it? Uh, this one is a bit of a two-parter. Weird. Uh, we, we did this interview about a month ago, and it was stellar. Such a cool conversation. And there's another intro coming. So it's actually got two intros. This, this. Um, a very deep interview, and we spoke about all sorts of things. And then on the day the podcast was supposed to be re released, um, Mac suddenly like blew up on Twitter. He had the whole of Twitter trying to cancel him. He had did, did something controversial on his uh, podcast and everything went crazy. He lost the brands that he was working with and I was intimately involved in that whole process. So it was very difficult. So I put the thing on ice and I've waited for stuff to cool down. And then now I just kind of added, I just spoke to him for five minutes just to get context of what happened since this interview, even though that interview never got released. So you'll see a little intro about what's happened and then you'll have another intro and what's super interesting about the conversation that we had was that we sort of covered a lot of this stuff we were anticipating problems like this and how brands work with them uh, it's really it strangely poignant where this the second interview goes that was done uh before this whole uh craziness happened um uh last month anyway this is part one uh and then there's another whole intro coming Hinda, <laughs> how you, bro? Mac G, what's going on? Nice to see your face. What's going on with you? Uh, not much, man. You tell me. That interview that I did with you is so. F I just listened to it again. It's so fucking great. It's amazing. For real. Wow. And, and weirdly, we preempt <laughs> sort of what was going on. You know, we we speak about brands reputation we did all this stuff yeah and then all this crazy shit went down yeah man and then uh i guess i just wanted to get your take on what what happened and maybe see if we can you know see where we're at yeah i, I don't even remember what uh, the first uh, episode was like i even forgot what we spoke about man so i'm i'm i'm, I'm <laughs> it's so lost <laughs> It's such a great chat. Just we didn't. We just got drunk and talked about all sorts of stuff. But it was about a passion for radio, how you got yeah. in, the DJs you liked, why you're doing what you're doing, how do brands engage with this universe? What is yeah. the legacy? What are they? What are you trying to? It's very, very cool. I mean, I really love this this chat. So I, I kind of put it on ice because it was the day that this was supposed to come out. That all this other shit went in, and obviously, because uh, we were working together at the time, I was in the middle of the shit storm. So I just wanted to put this. I wanted to put this piece at the beginning of the episode, just make it short and see, like, wh what ha what happened that day? How did it unfold from your side? Oh man, it was manic. Um, I think I was shooting an episode. I think I'm not sure. But um, one of my chillers is actually the person who I had on the, on the apology episode, Yandra Mavunda. Um, she hit me up and she was like, listen, I just watched the, the recent episode and, you know, I didn't like the segment. I think you should take it out. It might, you know, uh, 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 it might not end so well for you. And unfortunately, I was recording, so I didn't have time to actually check out what she was talking about. And by the time I'd finished recording, uh, that's when the Twitter shitstorm started and was like, yo, that is crazy. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I mean, I was watching it and it was hot. I even texted you. I said, bro, are you I watching this? You were, like, you were like, yeah, yeah, it's all good. This happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the first time like something like that um, happened at that magnitude. Because I'm, I'm hardly on social media. So um, uh, I'd, I'd, it was my first time training like that, let me just say. And it was, yeah, man, it was, yes, it was a mess. I think I had my phone off for like two days because everybody was trying to call me, you know? Uh, mm. But yeah, ah, it's not, it's old news now, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm not making it. I just want to see how you got through it. I mean, there were a lot of repercussions. Big brands stopped working with you. You became mm. uh, number enemy number one on Twitter, you know? Um, Twitter likes to destroy people. You were on number one of the cancel list. Mm -hmm. um, 
And when I spoke to you, and again, you know, you said, look, I mean, the, the, the take my take on it was that we spoke about it. You just said, look, uh, you know, it wasn't being malicious. It was just, a, I just we just said some stupid shit and I'm going to fix it. That's what you said. And then did you fix it? How did, what, how did you, what did you do? So what we did is uh, we put out an apology, uh, a statement, and then we shot um, uh, an episode with um, someone from the community. Um, like I said, her name was uh, her name is uh, Yantla Mavunja. So we sat down with her, and then we just chopped it up, and she schooled us a bit on you know what, why what we did was wrong, and 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 then you know I mean the episode is there for everybody to see, and then um, yeah after that. Um, We've uh, uh, taken steps in the in the network to make sure that such doesn't happen, uh, you know. Uh, but in terms of brands and stuff like that, I mean, I think I don't know if I mentioned it on the first podcast that we did, but like our business model is not um, focused on brands, so we don't do this for brands. Uh, we don't do this for anybody except the chillers. So. We did uh, speak know, about this a lot. We spoke. Yeah. We, we, this is why it was quite preemptive. We spoke about you were saying how you're totally focused on your audience. That's the person you're trying to, um, you know, relate to, cater for, service. You know, the yes. brands can come along for the ride, but that's what that's your job. So 100%. that's the you're apologizing to them, not to. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hundred percent. Yeah. And I felt like it was the right thing to do, man, because. Uh, in all honesty, um, I, when that happened, I didn't know that uh, it was um, distasteful and well, That was the interesting thing. I, I saw on Twitter, one of the most interesting things that a lot of people like said, I don't know why that was offensive either. I'd like to learn as well so that we can all mm. figure this shit out. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that that's why I, I, I did the episode. That's why I did the statement because I generally like what I said in that episode, that's what I felt. And uh, we've since moved past from that. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, man, rocking and rolling. Cool. Okay, cool. I'm just going to paste this on the beginning of the episode so that it, <laughs> so that it's, it's said. No, but that's the thing. The people that watch my channel know. Yeah. So, so, so if you watch my channel, you'll know that that's the kind of person I am, you know? Um, I mean, we talk, shit for a living so you can always mm -hmm. find something to suit your narrative so you know it's like ugh, there's nothing you can do it's just mm -hmm. that uh, luckily i've got such a strong fan base that they understand what this is for what this is about and that's why till this day you know we didn't get cancelled we're still we're still pushing well we spoke about this on the show as well so i look you know about the the fact that when shit happens it goes and it, you know you you're here to stay which it was all of that stuff i just listened to it right before this and i was like wow it was really poignant we were on point and you even spoke in there about the first time you got like slayed on twitter and that yeah. was before this <laughs> and then my last question is do, do you um, and uh, do you understand or are you do you acknowledge, do you, can you understand why the brand disconnected from you for for that stuff mm. Well, look, man, it's, 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 I wasn't shocked. I, I know like with brands, um, they like you until shit hits the fan. You know, we've seen mm. this time and time and again, I've seen this movie so many times. I mean, look at Katla Homa boy, uh, so many people. So uh, I just, it's part of the territory. So if you're going to get in bed with a, a brand, you, you got to know that they don't want any bad publicity. So if anything happens, chances are they're going to drop you. So I always well, knew that stuff. Kind of they can't afford bad. The difference is you yeah. can take bad publicity. They can't actually afford it. It can destroy it, destroy the business, you know? 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Cut, paste, stick it on. For everyone else, please, what this interview is is truly, you're going to see a great Mac G on this. And I, I know you haven't, it was like, we did this a month ago, so you don't even remember what's in it. <laughs> I um, it, has, it has a great ending. Do you remember the ending? <laughs> I think I remember the ending. I was with my girlfriend, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Did really, I propose? Was no, 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 no. <laughs> she came in and she said, get off. You guys are done. And then she ended up telling us for like 30 minutes the story of the building of Grandeur and how it was all her idea. It was beautiful. I loved it. Oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> cool, Mac. Onwards and upwards.
All right. Thank you, John. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I freaking forgot to press record on the first maybe 40 minutes of this interview with Mac G. Uh, all the audio is there, so I've uploaded that there. But the I, halfway through, I, it's, it's the one problem with drinking whiskey while you're doing a podcast. You got you start drinking before the show. You want to be relaxed. You want it to be natural, so you do the whole thing. Anyway, so like a idiot, I didn't press record when we started, which was some gold in there as well. So what I've done going forward is I've laid the audio over a still image for the first sort of half an hour, 45 minutes, and then once the video kicks in, you'll see the video. So it'll pick up then. My apologies. Welcome to What's Your Poison. Uh, I'm a douchebag, and you're going to have to deal with it. Mac Jews in the house. Hinda, what do you mean? What's going on? What's going on, John Savage? Who is the motherfucking legend who named you MacGyver? It's got to be my mother, man. She what? liked that show. Yeah? Are you really named yeah. after MacGyver? Yeah, she used to watch that show. She liked it a lot. And yeah, man, she named me MacGyver. And you know how they say a name? Have you lived up to any of Can you like build a tank out of an old used cereal box and a pencil? Nah, not not none of that shit. Listen, listen, wait, 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 wait. Right. Uh, you, you can tell I got my grandeur. Oh, the poison. <laughs> I got some poison. I got some. I got a Thai whiskey over here called Kavalan. I'll show Which you. one's that, bro? It's Thai. It's really I, mad. I'll show it to you. I, I recently tried some whiskey. I like uh, Glen Moranje. That's Ooh, my shit. You man. like good shit, then, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is called. Kavalan, and it's a Thai whiskey, which is really weird, but cool. It's delicious. Why aren't you, su- why aren't you supporting local, man? Fuck Thailand. No, no, I do. What I do is every every show we do a different whiskey, so we do them all. And you should not- do just local whiskeys. Yeah, well, you know how many local whiskeys there? Like two. So I'll just be going like, oh, it's Baines again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take a shot. Take a shot before asking this question. Are you ready? Take a shot. Take Wait, a shot. What, okay, first tell me what that's your own gin. Now, this is Mac G's own personal gin brand. Which yeah, you, man. And the, and the thing, yeah, the bottle. thing about this is like, I'm not, I'm not a face. You know, most of these brands they get a face, uh, and they get a big celebrity who's got numbers, hoping they'll push units for them. Like literally, I started this from the beginning. Like me and my woman, we did the recipe. So it's. It's like there's no white man behind this. Like, it's just all me, bro. Well, cheers to that, bro. That's really cool. And I want to know more about how you started that. But let's... Uh, oh, you got it in a nice cup, so it's classy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> cheers, bro. Did we meet? Didn't Didn't you play at a party oh. at the Mamas? The first oh, yeah, Mamas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Did yeah, we yeah. meet at the Mamas? Or not? Yeah. Hey, dude, I remember, man. The mamas was lit. I was just happy to be... Was it the one in Nigeria? Yes. That was yeah. fucking crazy. That was crazy. I saw Flo Rida, I saw Flo Rida, um, uh rehearse. And then as I was leaving Flo Rida rehearse, I went back to the hotel and I saw uh, the game. And we're having uh, a lunch together. I was like, yo, With, what up, dog? That guy was... I actually, like, pee pissed myself a little bit when he walked past me he's scary yeah no he's very intimidating he had like these goons and whatnot i know they walk but did you do you remember that we performed there that cassette performed at, at that mama's with ikichuku and a guy from night uh naito c from kenya do you remember that? wait john are you part of cassette are you joking now you fucking kidding me bro I, I th- what of course you know that are you, <laughs> are you fucking with me now what? No, I'm being serious. You put a cassette. Yeah, I was, I was the singer. You bullshit. Shit, me. I know you. No, I kid you not. I know you're the five of him, dude, bro. I don't know you're a fucking part of cassette. So that I remember the game walking past us backstage with his six bodyguards, and it was terrifying. Baby, baby, please can I have some dash there? I need some dash. I can't drink this clean. So then you DJ at a at a party there afterwards, right? Yeah, I was there. I was there at the ceremony, and then after that, we went to a party, and because um, I play house, and it was weird that night because um, 
um, like Nigeria is very, uh, is Crazy. it colloquial? Is the word? Yeah. So they just wanted to hear some Nigerian shit. And I'm coming in there with my house thing. And then eventually I ended up playing uh, hip hop. I remember I played, the first hip hop song I played was Lloyd Banks, Bima Benza Bentley, and the crowd went crazy. <laughs> Do you baby, have... please give me, uh, uh, baby, can I have some tonic there, please? What did you think about Nigeria though? I loved it. I thought it was bananas. Yeah. And we had a crazy, I think we, we partied with one of the ministers in his hotel room with like 30 hookers. Um, it was the craziest and scariest experience of my life because I actually thought they were going to kill us because we were. The, uh, it was, it was the minister of like transport. It was us, and dancing hookers everywhere, and, and just food and drinks coming in by the bucket load. He was paying in cash, and we all looked at each other and thought, "Are we going to get out of here alive?" And it was crazy. Dude, uh, MTV showed me life, man. Like it was crazy. Like I remember when I was in Angola. That was the first time um, I bought a hooker outside of um, South Africa. And she didn't understand English. So I'm just trying to say to her, <laughs> how much? <laughs> so I'm like, how much? She didn't understand any English, bro. <laughs> well, how was your sign language? Did it work? No, it worked eventually. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. <laughs> uh, but, I, but I went to Brazil and I can I know how to say Vunita Bonita. It means you're, you're beautiful. Oh, nice. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Is it the beard? Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be. <laughs> You've had a radical career, actually. I think we're quite similar, actually, you and me. We've had a very weird, yeah. like, I mean, I always feel like an outsider of the industry. Uh, do you feel like, that I'll, way? I'll tell you something, bro. I'll tell you, man, like, when I first met you, man, I'm all about energies, man. Like, I'm very big on energies and vibes, you know? Um, fuck, that was so crazy. A friend of mine was telling me this yesterday. Um, Nelson Makomo, you know Nelson Makomo? Yeah huge guy and i didn't know how big nelson was until yesterday and my tell was and my friend was telling me how big he was like oprah buys his art and he's done this he's done that but when i met him we we're literally at my friend's house and um we we're brian and i just saw a normal nigga you know what i mean like i'm like oh cool guy and that's the thing with me, bro. Like, I, 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 when I see people, I don't base them on color or skin and what they've done, how big their Twitter following is, whatever. It's just basically energies, man. And with you, the reason why I love working with you and I still want to work with you is the energies, you know what I mean? Like, like everything we do, yes, you know, uh, you've got... Um, uh, objectives you got to meet for your clients and so do I. But... It's never felt like work when I'm with you, you know, and cool, and and yeah, man. Like energies are a big thing for me, man. Like, cause at the end of the day, man, we're all humans. It doesn't. We all shit at the end of the day. So it doesn't matter how much, how many millions you have in the bank account, how famous you are, how many followers you are. If you're a shit person, you're a shit person. Well, you've you're amazing because you've got lots of followers, and you're a shit person. <laughs> <laughs> jokes that's a total joke <laughs> you just set me up for that. <laughs> no i i love you know i i um well, this is not meant to be a wank fest but um it's turning into one you what you're doing in your podcast the way you handle your interviews they're uncompromising and that is a very rare and I mean, I, it's art to me what you're doing, and that's why I think it's been it's it's so important to protect, bring in the brand, to help support you do what you continue doing what you're doing, not to do a, like a let's do the uh, shiny version, but to keep on doing what you do because you, no one does it that way. And it's, let me tell you something. Let me yeah. let me go get it. Let me go get my mixer. I think my girl's in the toilet. Let me go get my mixer, and I'll tell you what happened. Hold on, hold on. So,
Yeah. So what I'm saying, right, is that a lot of people um, that I've met recently, because uh, the, the the podcast is, you know, um, taking a life of its own, they're always like, "Yo, man, I'm so inspired. Uh, I love what you're doing. Like you're saying, I love your interviewing skills." And for me, it's it, I never sat down to say to map out. Okay, cool. This is what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm gonna do. Like the podcast, for example, I just literally wanted to be on the mic. You know, that's all I've ever loved. That's all I ever want to do. And it wasn't like a deep thing where I have to sit down and read books and get all these philosophers to direct me to a path. It was like, ah, right, cool. I want to be behind the mic. Nine four seven fired me. Huh, what can I do? Ah, oh, shit. Let me start a podcast. Put a mic, cost me 5K, chilled with my baby mama, with my best friend. We sat on the couch. We started this thing. And then it's a monster that it is now. But, like, it's always weird when people are like, you inspire me and whatever. Because my goal was not to inspire people. My goal was not to be a philosopher and be this intellectual person who can sit and say, yeah, look at me. Hey, this is what I've done, whatever. I just literally wanted to be behind the mic. And and I cannot explain to you uh, 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 um, why what's happening is what's happening. Like, it's beyond me. I, I sometimes don't even believe it. I need to pinch myself, you know, because I just literally wanted to be behind the mic, and that's it. Tell me about your your last days on on FM and the sort of migration into the... The digital world. Well, I mean, we were forced there because the the station, for me, the stations didn't want us, didn't want me anyway. But that's what I'm think. That's what I'm saying. Like, I it was it was nothing was ever conscious, bro. Mm. It was literally like, ah, right, cool. What can you do? Mm. Because I come I come from a background where um, you don't uh, what's the word? Uh, rest on your laurels. Laurels is that the word? Rest, rest on, on your laurels. Yeah. Yeah. So like if life hits you, if life smacks you in the face, you're like, all right, cool. What's next? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Very so well. It was li- <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, all right, cool. I'm fine. What can I do? Ah, right, let me start a podcast. What do I need? Need a mic. Get a mic. Upload it on YouTube. Boom. So it's, like I, there's nothing profound that I'm going to say. So tell me about your viewership count for the first year or two. Like, how how do you motivate? How, how were you doing in the early days, and how did you just push through all of that stuff? So for me, it's not even about yes. Um, we at a point now where you need to monetize. Obviously, you know you got to feed the family. I've got a kid. You know these fucking kids eat three times a day. You know you got to feed them. You know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but when I started, mm. honestly, I didn't think about monetization. I never thought that one day I'd be in Amp Studios talking to Cloud Baller, uh, who's the CEO or whatever, managing director at at at, at uh, Spotify. It never, yeah, it never crossed my mind. It was just literally like um, being behind the mic feeds my soul. So uh, it was never about views. It was just like, yo. We did a show. I'm happy. Cool. But surely I'm, getting I'm, four, I'm, I'm, six I'm, views uh, it didn't, had no impact. So you did, if you got six views on your 20th episode, you're like, just keep on trucking. Doesn't matter. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, when you bust a nut, do you count how many minutes you lost to that round? <laughs> Some are shorter. Some are longer, but you know, you just want to bust a nut. Right. <laughs> you know, that's the ultimate goal. I got it. You so, know what I mean? So it was yeah. just, uh, it, you just needed to get it out. You just wanted to do it. Didn't matter about where yeah. it was going. Yeah. So it was just an outlet for me mm. whereby in, in the week I had a time where I could just be myself and uh, fulfill the, the, the hunger that I had of being in the mic. And if five people watched it, a thousand people watched it, twenty thousand people watched it, 
you know, it was all good. I just got to be behind the mic and bust that nut. How many years have you been doing that podcast? Uh, two years now. Shit. Amazing. Yeah, we're going on to three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at what point on that trajectory did it actually start? going like okay this is more this is a little bit more than busting my nut it is actually something that i'm gonna <laughs> so how it started how it started is i, I wanted to because i realized very right, cool in this industry if you're quiet for for a while um out of mind what is it out of sight out of mind yeah yes. people think you don't exist anymore exactly for example like i didn't know you were doing a podcast until we worked on amped you know, because you've been out of sight for a while, you know, in terms of the uh, radio space. You know, I could say the same for Mark Gilman. I don't know what the fuck Mark Gilman is doing Mark Gilman right is in now. London Mark. selling advertising to radio stations. There you go. So he's been out of, yeah, he's been out of he sight. Been, yeah, so in the radio, mic, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was like, all right, cool. What I need to do is let me try to do this thing. So maybe some program managers can see and hear that, hey, I'm still here, you know? And hopefully by April, um, you get a job they can back. be like, oh, yeah, I'll get a job. That was the plan. Yeah, That was the plan. And then, like two, three months doing this thing, I interviewed Zintle, DJ Zintle. Um, I went to a house with an iPad and we shot this thing. I was still getting like 100 views, 200 views, uh, whatever my family was watching, friends were watching, that accumulated to 200 views. And then Zintle did the one thing that since I've started this thing, no celebrity has ever done, which is she took our episode and she put it as a link on her Instagram. And if you swiped up, you could go straight to the link. Because normally what happens is when I interview celebrities they did the interview the fuck off they never tweet about it post about it whatever it's just like okay job done boom boom but she was the first to like swipe up and remember she's got like three million two million uh, 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 uh um followers on, on instagram you know so when she did that it spiraled so from 200 views it became 2000 and then became 10,000 and became 20,000 and then I remember when it became 10,000 I, I was chatting to Len I'm like fuck dude we might not even need to go back to radio like if we can grow these numbers you know there's no yeah. need bro now you own you your know audience what I mean? you don't have to build someone yeah. else's audience it's your audience exactly and that's power if it wasn't yeah, and if it wasn't for Zintle, I would have, I wouldn't have realized the power that what I was doing could accumulate to. Fucking awesome! <laughs> Is that the Irish whiskey? <laughs> it's Thai, bro. It's Thai. Mm -hmm. I got a mad collection of whiskeys here. I'm mad, for, because of this goddamn show. <laughs> and also, like, yeah. it was an, another driving force to why I was like, "Fuck it, let me do this." was to show 947 like you made the wrong choice revenge is the best motivator it is it drives me every day that's the driving force prove all these fuckers wrong and it's the yeah. there's fire in that you know i get that it's particularly i felt you know when i got dust off of five fm they said this was their exact thing and i i think that was the wrong decision it was at a pivotal moment when the digital world wasn't quite ready to take off yet and they were scared of it and they said um this is the problem with your show john you have built a massive audience for your show but the problem is it's not the five fm audience you're building an audience who doesn't listen to five and then they tune in for your uh -huh. show and they tune out and we have to ask ourselves, do we want to continue growing our core audience or do we want to grow all these other audiences? And they decided, no, they didn't want these sort of splinter audiences. They wanted to grow their core audience. So they were like, you're gone. And I was gutted. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's, uh, I remember, dude, like, and it's so weird. Fuck. It's so weird that what's happening now that's why I like everything happens for a reason, man. I learned it when I was in an I-47. So this is how it transpired. I was um, doing late nights and whatever, and I do stuff that, you know, Ravi Naidu, ne? 
you know yes. what i mean yeah if you, so if i'll do radio. stuff yeah, yeah yeah google him if you're not in radio <laughs> he's been there he's part of the furniture there in prime media the gatekeeper so <laughs> so he said to me this one time he's like hey mac you know i love your show whatever whatever you good broadcast or whatever but sometimes like you just left and some of the shit you say it would be nice if you would if we had another channel so it's like so the other side that we don't like of you if that lived on youtube it would be dope mm. right and then i went to a staff meeting one day and then anlele said during the staff meeting that it's important to have uh celebrity interviews on your show because then those celebrities bring their audience to your show so if you bring an aka he's going to bring his audience you know what i'm saying and if they didn't know about that radio show now they're going to know about it because you've got aka and he's going to advertise it whatever so like that's what the podcast is <laughs> to get on say it's ravi naidu's podcast And Nanelle. <laughs> and Nanelle, yeah. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? I totally get Because I realized, it. oh, you you put I all realized, the pieces okay, together. Cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, all right, cool. If I do that and I do that and I do that and I piece it together, we've got this thing. Because the the main aim for the celebrity interviews is that is to uh, inform them and make them aware that hey, there's a channel like this mm-hmm. that exists, and then there's a Monday episode where we get crazy and talk all the shit that we want. And then obviously if you get an interview that has 100,000 views there'll be 10,000 20,000 that stay mm. for the Monday episode and that's how you get to 100,000 and so forth. I mean have you what is your interviewing style? Like what do you what are your objectives and how, how do you approach because they're so fresh what the way you do it's so cool. What do, what is, what is your like preparation what, what are you trying to do? or do you just turn on the mic and see what's what's what um a lot of people always ask me that and it's been 10 years in the making believe it or not uh for 10 years i did a lot of uh graveyard shifts so you know graveyard man you well, back announce yeah yeah you back announce you play six songs 30 minutes so during that time i would be studying broadcasters mm. like from Australia, Carl and Jackie O, Howard Stern. Uh, who's that guy from the UK? Fuck, I forgot him. Chris Shit. Moyles? Chris who's that? Norton something. No- Chris Moyles? Yes, 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 yes. Graham Norton? Yeah. Graham Norton. Yes, yes, yes. So during my time when I was doing Graveyard, I was studying these guys. So because I knew that one day I want to do drive time. And when I want to do drive time, I wanted to equip myself with all the knowledge that I needed to make it a banging show. Because what you got to understand is that when you get drive time at breakfast, you only have that one chance to impress. So if you're not prepared, you can either flank or kill it. Mm-hmm. And if you kill it, you sort it. You know what I mean? So I was like, all right, cool. I'm doing graveyard. It's fine. But let me use this time to equip myself and empower myself with all the knowledge that i need so that when i do drive i can kill it but it just happened to be that the podcast is not my drive time show i love that you said that and um it explains a lot to me about how you work because this is the thing to me oh this is a terrible thing to say i i think that a, most ugh, a lot of the local DJs don't get it like the fact what you're saying is you listen to the greats you know you listen to the guys who are doing it their own way you learn from them and you are like okay i understand what they're kind of doing i want to do that whereas what i find locally what we do is we go okay that guy's got a feature carpool karaoke it's working mm. really well i'm going to just do that right we're going to mm. do it we're going to call it in the car singing okay you know and it's oh it's me and i find there are very few very unique you know we have DJs who have the voice this is a DJ's voice but then, <laughs> but we don't have a lot of DJs who have that 
personality and 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 when you look overseas like one of the things i remember from my childhood that had a big impact on me was um you know the sabc continuity presenters are like really hot very sexy they have the personality of corn on the cob right and once when i was tra traveling actually with cassette and i was watching the tv in the uk they had this continuity presenter who was a red-haired guy with funny geeky thing and freckles and was fucking hilarious and his <laughs> you know his links between the shows were the best entertainment and i was like oh it's all about what you bring to the to the thing it's not about like the f feature that's working it's about mm -hmm. the no. and we don't have a lot of personalities behind the mic what I, what I, what i learned from the very beginning because when i first got into why i'd sit into um there's a guy called Amon. So I'd sit into Amon's show and I listen to him. And I'm like, okay, cool. Oh, this is dope. And then I even went to Fresh's show um, when he was at five. And I sat with him and I'm like, oh, okay, so this is a Fresh this uh, is show. Fresh is an exception. I, Fresh is an original voice. He to me, he is he is yeah. the, the the beacon. But here's what I'm getting to. And then I go to Rupert Paul. I'm like, okay. But Paul does this. So what I realized, I was like, fuck, that's fucked up. Because the more and more I listen to Fresh, the more and more I'm going to become like Fresh. Right. The, the more and more I listen to M1, the more and more I'm going to become like M1. So what I need to do is actually not listen to them. Uh -huh. So have a have a blank canvas whereby whatever I'm doing is new because I'm not influenced by anything. I realized that, okay, the more and more I listen to Amon, the more and more I'm just going to be, become a better imitation of Amon or a better imitation of Fresh. So I stopped listening to everybody. Uh, but, you know, I draw inspiration. Like, for example, when I start my show, I say, Hinda, Hinda. That's a Venda colloquial thing, but it stems from Howard Stern. Howard Stern, every time he says his show, he says, hey now. Hey now. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, cool. How can I spin it to make it Mac, Mac G and, Super cool. you know, yeah, resonate with me. I was like, ah, I'm Venda. Let me go Henda. So wherever I go, when I say Henda, people know that's Mac G. But it stems from how it's turned because every time he starts the show, he goes, hey now. He's been saying that for 30 years. That's cool. So you are actually, you're a craftsman. You, you are totally focused on the craft. It's, it's not fun and games. You're deep in the well of studying the greats, understanding the things, adopting all this stuff. It's not just dumb luck that you have an, you're just like killing it. <laughs> nah, bro. It's, it's 10 years in the making. Like I said, like graveyard, bro. I, I was studying. I was watching Gray Norton. I was like, all right, cool. I watch Sway in the morning. I'm like, hey, cool. How does he do this thing? I watch Howard. I watch Ryan Seacrest. I'm like, all right, cool. I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? And then, and then, and then. You're not going to believe this. I wasn't even recording the video. I pressed it. I was recording <laughs> the audio. <laughs> Fuck. I pressed it and didn't record anyway. It doesn't matter. Oh, fuck that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, it's an audio. Luckily, it's an audio podcast, not a radio yeah. podcast. But fuck, I'm an idiot. Yeah, Sorry. cocksucker. Yeah. Sorry. Like I, you know, guess guess who my favorite broadcaster of all time in his day. You're not gonna get this, bro. If you get this, I, I will send you a bottle of Granger right now. Okay, what is this? Give me a clue. The station. What station he, were they on? He used to work at nine four seven. Say, say that again. He used to work at nine four seven. Yeah, Highfield, Highfield Stereo. Can't be I'm Alex J. I'm gonna give you one chance. It's not Alex J. Can't be. Okay. Best this DJ. guy. This guy was fucking phenomenal. This guy did not get the chance. This guy could have taken radio to the next level if Ravi believed in him. If Ravi took a risk on him, this guy was the be all and end all for me and this is a black guy who grew up listening to YFM, listening to Rude Boy Paul, Bad Boy T, Fresh, 
or smooth. But I went heard, when I heard this guy, it's a white guy, I'm like, what the fuck is this? What radio is this? This is before your Mark Gilman's, your Roger Good. When I heard this guy, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm, I'm scared that I don't even know who this person is. Can Will I tell I you? Yeah. Reverend fucking John. Reverend John. <laughs> really? Dude, top eight and eight. Top eight and eight. <laughs> Fuck out of here, bro. Reverend John. Reverend John. Hey! It's him, Fat Joe. Dan. Fat Joe. Fuck, cool. Dan. Nice. So what, what was the thing about Reverend John? Bro, man. I don't know bro, if man. it... <laughs> I don't know if it was because I was young and he was the first kind of voices I heard, but that guy, bro, you do some shit just like Fat Joe does. Where you're like, how the fuck does this guy think of this, bro? You know, Reverend John, bro. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's meant to do breakfast at 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 at, at, at nine four seven. That he was a controller, but he was so overpowering. He over, he overpowered um, what's his name, Jeremy Mansfield, that they had to give him his own show. He started as a controller. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. You Where is he mean? now? Is he still uh, around? Last time I heard, he was in the states doing something, but he's quit radio, man. But that nigga, that nigga was you fucking. Get him on your show, bro. You got to get him on. Yeah, no, it'd be nice, man. Reverend John, <laughs> even Ravi knows. I told Ravi, I'm like, yo, bro, I listen to Highfeld because of Reverend John. Top 888. He'd give away CDs. What did you think of Gilman in his day? Um, okay, I'll tell you about Gilman. I never heard him because when I started listening to 5FM, I'd heard, I heard uh, Gareth Cliff. But because I listened to Howard, I just knew like Gareth Cliff is a copy, cut and paste of Howard. Like, Literally, like, Howard would say something on Friday and then Gareth would say the same thing on a Monday, you know. So I don't respect Gareth for that because he's a cut and copy, you know. Um, with, with, with Mark Gilman, I never listened to him. but I He was an hear, original voice. I can hear sounds of him on Roger Good. Right. I, I, I mean, Mark, I, I'll tell you what, I have a, I have a radio memory was life-changing for me it's actually what made me fall in love with radio it was gilman and you know who he had michael flatley in studio do you remember michael flatley he was river dance he was an international star doing river dance around the world but apparently he was a total like cocksucker and he came late to the interview and apparently was a real dick and mark was the host so they were doing this interview. They were in the middle of this interview and it was getting tense. And suddenly they cut to a music break Shit. for like 10 minutes. And when they came back, Mark had written a speech and he said, he's, I, I paraphrase because I can't remember, but it was a, to me an iconic moment in the world of radio. He said, you know, I live for my audience. Like I know my voice is annoying, but every day, I live and breathe for my audience. When I speak, I'm not just like coming out with stuff I think is cool. I live for you, the audience. And this guy not only arrived late, meaning he disrespects my audience, yeah. but yeah. his fucking attitude he brought in here, the, the way he was not sort of thing. I just cut him off and told him, get the hell out of my studio. And he said, who, do, do you know who I am? And he's, I said, I don't care who you are. This is radio. This you arrive here and you respect the people that are listening here. They've given you know they're here for you. You don't matter. Get out. And there was a bit of an altercation, and he's gone. And I apologize to you guys that you had to endure that. I just wanted you to know that's what happened. Let's move on with the show. And in that moment, I went like, radio is powerful. It's not just people talking, playing songs. There's power there. It was such a big moment for me to go like. Radio, it's where that's where it's at, you know. And I Fuck. always loved Gilman for that. I didn't care. 
because I, I, in that moment, I got into his head and I always wanted to know what he was thinking. And the way he did that, it was, was really amazing. But that's the thing, bro. That's what really was about. It's a reflection of society. Mm. You understand? If someone disrespects you in your own house, what are you going to do? You're going to tell well, them, most, hey, fuck you. Yeah, but most DJs, they worship the, the person on the other They worship the celebrity before the audience. That's what I'm saying. That was such an iconic moment because I don't. I went, I wouldn't have done that. I would have just gone, oh, yes, Mr. Flatley. No, Mr. Flatley. This guy said, my audience comes first. And you, you global superstar, can fuck right off because... You, you don't care about my audience. I don't want you in this room anymore. That was amazing. And, that, and that's what I said to you. If it comes to me and says they've got 150,000, I said to you, if it does not resonate with my audience, I'll tell yeah. them, fuck off. Yeah. yeah because yeah, yeah. that audience is there to stay. You understand? Jack Daniels, all these brands come and go. You know, we are servant of the people. And, you know, and that's what radio has lost. Radio is corporate. Like, there's no difference to listening to Peak and Pay FM to a 947. Literally, if you're not doing drive or breakfast, you just do live reads. You just you're just do... holding the airwaves until, until lunch, till uh, drive time. Exactly. You play voice notes, competitions out. Yeah. That's a disconnect. Yeah. It's a disconnect. I you agree. know what I mean? I mean, I. I, I failed miserably, but I started a radio station, The Eye, which is now nearly five years old. Uh, but I couldn't get it to work. And the point of the radio station was to just make radio that was actually what I felt was important radio. But nobody gave a fuck. That's the truth of it. <laughs> um, I think I had. I think on The Eye, we've had some of the edgiest. The radio I'm most proud of on planet Earth is on that station. But the listenership's like 36 after four years, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what you do. I don't know what you've done so brilliantly. Well, that's, I know what you've done. You've just done what you do. That's the I thing. Should have got like, you on the eye. I should have come on. To <laughs> I should have. I should have had your audience. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, man. I'm just doing what I love. It just happens mm. that you know people like it. You you are really a, a, a sh like a solo beacon in this crazy industry. Um, tell me a bit about your your parents, your relationship with your parents, how you grew up, all that shit. Uh, ah, bro, man, I was brought up by my mom. Uh, no dad. Uh, um, there's not, there's not, there's no, there's no story there, man. I was grown up. I was brought up by my mom. I I stayed in Venda. Who was while, your dad? Buddy. What happened to your dad? Uh, no, no, my, no, 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 my. <laughs> it was a spam. It was a spam. You, you're that. Jesus. <laughs> I knew it. No, you're the Jesus. You're the podcasting Jesus. No, my, 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 my... <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, trademark that. <laughs> Mac G, the podcasting Jesus. I like it. I like it. <laughs> No, no, no. My, 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 my mom had me when she was young. She was like 18 and my dad was absent. He's been absent ever since. So my mom grew me up, but I stayed with my aunt in Venda. You have have you met mom. your dad? Yeah, I've met him. I've met him. Oh, so you, have you got a relationship with him? Yeah, I've got a relationship with him, but it's not like, you know, you can't make up for past, you know, but yeah. we're cool. Like I call him, he's, he's, he knows where I stay. He comes, we chill, but like, if, Do you if, call him dad? No. No. But if Jack Daniels gives me one million, I'm not <laughs> going to call him dad. first. I'm not going to call him. <laughs> I'll call my mom and, and say, yo, just give me a bag for one million. And then I'll probably tell him like six months later. So I know him. We cool. We cordial. We chilled. But it's like, it is what it is, man. What's your mom like? Hey man, my mom is strict, bro. My mom is strict, bro. Like, my mom is strict, man. Like, I'm, I'm the total. Here, she's, strict. <laughs> she's the total opposite of me. Like, I'm chilled, man. I don't like. You know what my mom is like? She's the type of lady where if you go to a restaurant, 
we order, right? I'll say, can I please have a, uh, obviously I'm with her, I can't drink because she doesn't like the fact that I drink. She hates the fact that I smoke, even worse. So I can't say, can I have a beer? I'll say, can I have some lemonade, passion fruit and lemonade, yes. And then she'll say, can I have some hot water? The waiter will come and then she'll say, no, this hot, this water is not hot enough. Please make it hot. And then the waiter will go back. Waiter comes back and she'll say, no, this water is too hot. Please, whatever, whatever. She's like that. That time I'm like, yo, man, fucking hell. What the fuck? <laughs> is, she not, is, she, uh, is she creative? No, no, no. She's just OCD. Oh, OCD. I mean, that, yeah. okay. Yeah. How are you like your mom? Um, she's very outspoken. Um, so am I, and she's very funny. I like to think, in more in more ways than one, I'm actually just like my mother. Fuck, yeah, it's a good question, man. It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, she's very outspoken, man, and she's just free. Like we we talk about sex, you know what I mean? You know, we talk about sex and in what way? She tells you about her sex life. You talk about your sex life. You compare. What What, what do you mean? You talk about sex with your mom? Yeah, yeah. She'll tell me like, "Hey, this boyfriend is not doing the things, the parts." <laughs> <laughs> Serious? That's amazing. Yeah. You know, I wanted to do a podcast with 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 my mother. Bro, but I want I wanted to be an audio version, bro. I did one. I've done one with my mom, right? Yeah. This is, and I really believe that there should be a whole podcast series yeah. of kids interviewing yeah. their parents. Yeah. Because we don't we don't know, uh, you know, we just pick it up. We don't actually go in and ask the questions of our parents that that we should. We, like, not, for example, she, she wanted to abort me, dog. See, this, you've got to fucking do this interview. You and her. Yeah. You've got to do it. <laughs> and the thing is, after that, she tried to have more kids. She couldn't. Wow. That's so fucking hectic. <laughs> I could be talking to a blank screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> And, and and that's what I'm saying. She's open about that. Like she told me, she's like, "Yo, dude, I wanted to abort you, bro, because <laughs> your father was fucking up." <laughs> you know, so crazy. Yeah, no, no. Like she's like my best friend, man. She's like my cool. best friend. Do you speak to her every day? No, not every day. Not every day. I don't know. Does that make me a mother's uh, uh, mama's boy? You know what? I think mama's boys are cool. Mm. You know, take care of your mom. Look what they did for us, bro. Yeah, man. No, she did a lot, man. I'll tell you, this is the, the reason I did um the reason I did a podcast on my mom was because my dad passed away way too early. Shit. Man. And I always regret that I didn't really and, and right before he died, he actually started writing a book about his life, and his life was fucking crazy. Wow. And I he only wrote the first chapter or the first two. And reading those two chapters, like, I actually didn't know shit about it. I wish I could sit and have that chat. And I think we all, as kids, it, it sounds different with you. But with me, I realized that I never treated my parents like people because I ha I, I, I'm instantly a child when I'm around my mom. I'm instantly that, that kid. So I never, like, think, oh, that person's an actual person who's lived a life and done these things. So that's why I wanted to talk to her and ask yeah, her like crazy questions. Yeah. I think I think the one thing with, with, with COVID, what has made me realize is that man, life is short, man. You gotta appreciate every moment. And the one thing ah fuck. I gotta get a drink for this so I can tell you. Hold on. My woman doesn't want to mix for me. Hold on. She's still on the toilet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, where was right, I? I'm gonna, where was I'm gonna fill up. You're about to tell me a great story, and then you you wanted a drink before you told me. Oh yeah. So 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 um, 
uh yeah so my mom um grew up in Vienna, right uh with my aunts okay and then my mom came this side uh in joburg right to to work so she can provide a better life for me right so i come this side i go to F fairways good school good primary school i was a victor delorean there <laughs> Really? Yeah, my name Amazing. is on the those those fucking things, man. In the in the hall, whatever. And then I went to Hyde Park High. So here I am, bro. I'm in Joburg, bro. Black kid. Uh, it's the new South Africa. Went to a multiracial school. Um, in my school, there's white kids, Indians. What 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 year are we looking at here? Uh, I matriculated 2005, so high school would be, uh, 2000, is it 2000, You matriculated 2005. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So multiracial school, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now I come from a background. I think you mean a model C school. Yeah. yeah model C. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I wrote IEB, IEB exams, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so now, everyone, everyone in the family is like, yo, after metric, what are you going to study? You know what I mean? Because we come from that age where you got to be a doctor or an accountant. That's when, like, mm. you sort it. And I was like, nah. And I told my mom, oh, like, what did your mom want you to be? A doctor or a lawyer or an accountant? She 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 didn't care. She said okay. as long as I do what I love, I'm good. And because of the school I was at, I felt the pressure. There was a time in grade eleven where we're in an accounting class and the teacher asked us, What do you want to be? And everybody was like, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an accountant. I want to be a scientist. I want to be a geologist. All the all the ists that you can imagine. <laughs> all the ists. Yeah. And then when it came to me, I was like, yo, fuck. I want to say I want to be a radio DJ, but I know they're gonna laugh at me because it was looked up, it was looked down upon, you know. It was like, what the fuck? Who the, what the fuck wants to be a radio DJ? So I just said I want to be an accountant. So my mom saw, because she saw me that I like music and I like entertaining or whatever. She's like, all right, cool. You want to be an accountant? Shut. Let's go to an accounting firm. She took me to an accounting firm in Kilani. And the guy sat me down. He was like, yo, you got to study for three years. And then after three years, you got to get your master's in five years. And then blah, blah, blah. In total, it was 10 years to be a proper CA. And I was like, fuck that. That shit is I crazy. I still, that still boggles my mind that that's what happens. Yeah, I was like, I'm not doing that shit. And that's when she's like, you see, that's not for you. And then that's when I told her I want to be on radio. And then after I matriculated, I worked at a community station in Gandhi hold on, Square. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You tell your mom you want to be in radio, not an accountant. What does she say? She she says, cool. That's what you want to do. That's what you do. She says, cool. And we she had saved about 180k uh, for me to go to varsity. And we used that money to get a car. I was like, no, get a car. Now I'm going to push my radio thing. I don't want to do varsity. That's not my what I want to do. Um, if I go there, I'll be doing something that I don't like. I want to yeah. do radio. And I'm going to push radio. And I bought myself a mic. And I'd practice at home. I'd interview her. I'd interview my grand, my late grand. I'd interview my cousins. Every time I got an opportunity to do something with someone in my house, I'll just record it, you know? Have and you still then, got those recordings? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. <laughs> That's cool. That's very really nice. And then I went to uh, JBCCR in Newtown. And uh, it was literally just like we we're broadcasting to all the people that were buying tickets to get buses. You know, uh, Newtown, there was a bus station and we just broadcast to people catching buses and whatever. And that's where I learned my trade. And I was like, I want to be at YFM. 
And yeah, man, the rest was history, as they say. No. So how did you get onto? I mean, th this is such a great story. I love this. How how did you go from saying I want to get onto YFM to getting onto YFM? That's a big deal. So how I got into YFM is that um because you did the breakfast show on YFM, so you actually did no, you? Stand -ins. No, no, no. I did I did oh. standings for every show. Every uh -huh. show. I did standings for every single show on the lineup. Breakfast, drive, midday, graveyard, weekend. I did every single show. There was a time when I was nine for seven where I was working seven days a week. I had a show every single day. On Saturdays, I did nine for seven hits in a, in a row, which was from 6 p.m. until midnight, I did six hours. So I'd work Monday to Friday, uh, 12 until four. And then Friday, Saturday, I'll do 94 hits in a row from 6 p.m. until midnight. And then Sunday, I'll do nine until 12. So I was working every single day. But how I got into why was um, I did the 947 thing where they brought people in June 16, like young people want to be in broadcasting. And that's where I met, fuck, what's this guy's name, man? It was a big deal there. Not Alex J, but he was that age. Fuck, what's his name? Anyway, he was standing in for Mark Pilgrim. And he brought us out. I was 16 years old. And he brought us out. And he was like, do a link. So you got to remember, like, I've been doing links at home for the longest time. So when it was my turn to do a link, I fucking killed it. Because I've been practicing. You know what I mean? Killed it. And... My mom asked this guy, he's like, so my, must my son go to Boston Media College to study radio? And then this guy, I forgot his name, man. You know him, bro. You know him. Give me all the bullies that were at 947. Give me the names. Right. I'll tell you who it was. I'll have to Google this. Okay, so 947 Legends, I'm going to Google. Yeah, during Alex Cage. Cage, uh, Alex Cage. Uh, definitely not John Carney. Oh, no, that's Lebel M. Oh, why is and there chats to John Legend and Mike Jackson? I oh, know this is not the, the one we want. Okay, so hold on. Come in and remember this guy. Legendary 947 DJs. Let's try Googling that. No. No. Say, say um, nine, High Felt Stereo lineup 2005. Yes. Okay, High Felt lineup 2005. Yeah. It looks like I've never, I've never ever in my life heard Google say this. It says it looks like there aren't any matches for your search. <laughs> okay, but it's fine. So, so that guy was there. Hold on. It was a fresh new. Oh no, this is a five FM lineup for, for two thousand and five. Jeremy Mansfield. Okay. Anyway, somebody. Yeah. So that guy is like, no, listen, your 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 boy is good. He just needs a bit of training here and there. What I would suggest, he goes to a community station. And then he can work at a commercial station. So that's what I did. So now I'm trying to get to why, right? It just so happens my mom owned uh, a meter taxi uh, business at the time. And lo and behold, guess who I'm transporting at the time? I'm transporting Dineo Ranaka. Guess where she stays? She stays at my complex. So I'm like, yo, Daniel, I fucking love YFM. I'm trying to get in there. And she was about to be on the new lineup with Chili M. So Daniel Ranaka is just like, listen, uh, I'm doing the drive time with Chili M. It's full. Uh, so there's no space for you there. But there's a guy who's going to be on the lineup who I think you guys would gel. And his name happens to be Mo Flavor. So I'm like, hey, Dini, whatever... Whatever you've got for me, I will do. It's cool. No stress. So for six months, I would drive to Neo to YFM. And then when I get to YFM, I'll do a music show on More Flavors uh, show. So I had a segment for five minutes between half past six and 35 minutes, 25 minutes to seven. For those five minutes, I was just doing entertainment news. But I'd be at YFM the whole day just to do that five minutes. So while I'm chilling there, I'll see. Once you swipe your little dingle in the door, they ain't, you ain't coming out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so and and, and this is when YFM's in Rosebank? 
Yeah, Rosebank. Rosebank. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in Rosebank, I'm seeing Monday. I'm seeing Fresh. I'm seeing Unati. I'm seeing all these people, you know? And then uh, I did that for about five months. Here's the story. And I've told the story in my podcast a lot of times, but you probably don't know it. So at the time, Trevor Noah was doing midnight until 3 a.m. And Tully B was doing 3 to until 6 a.m. So six months in the new contract. So April has come and gone. It's six months into the new lineup. Trevor Noah decides, fuck it. He's not going to do radio. He wants to focus on comedy. What an idiot. Look what he missed out on. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember the last time I met Trevor Noah was in Rosebank in the basement. I was doing a show after him and he was like, yo, that's my last show on YFM. I'm like, yo, dude, I'm 18, dude. And I just want to be on radio and YFM is the coolest shit. I'm like, why the fuck would you leave YFM? And he left, he did Mr. Salsi and then, you know, Daily Show, he is what he is now. And then when he left, they moved Tully B to Trevor Noah's show. The 12 so to 3. Now, yeah, so now they needed someone to fill in Tully B's show. And because I was there all the time, they're like, That's hey, the let's try this kid. You know what I mean? Let's try this kid. What was that? Three to six? What was the show? Three to six weekends. That's that's a that's a proper graveyard. After party, that's what I call the party uh, nice. the show. <laughs> yeah, and bro, yeah, that's when I started, bro. I had mass respect for you before this sh- this talk, but I'm like, I'm I'm in I'm like part of the tribe, bro. I'm I'm a Mac G all in guy here. <laughs> that, but that's if a- you check, if you check the 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 consistent thing. Whether it's the podcast, whether it was when Trevor left and I got the wife in gig, whether it's 947, the consistent thing, all I've wanted to do was just be behind the mic. That's it. And isn't it crazy that you were right in the thick of all of those things? And, you know, you are someone who is the real deal. You are someone whose passion, you know, is you study the craft, you've got the experience that this commercial world doesn't still can't find a place for you. But it's so obvious from the success you're having that there is, ma- you know, there's a massive place for you. You, you are proving them wrong. You, you know, you've proved them wrong in the biggest way because they wish they have what you have. You know, the thing is, like I keep saying to you, like, that's not my objective. My objective wasn't to prove people wrong and to... Uh, 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 um, but come on, it's, it's cool, isn't it? It's cool. Like, it's, 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 a, it's a huge pat in the black. Uh, pat in the back. <laughs> pat on the black. There's another... <laughs> you can take him that as well. Mac G, he's, he's, your, he's your weekend pat on the black. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a cool validation. Yeah. It's a cool, like, yeah, dog, what you're doing is dope. But what I'm trying to say is that that wasn't my objective. No. So everything that is happening um, subsequent to what I've done is a bonus for me. Mm-hmm. So if I can inspire someone, it's a bonus. I'm not saying I go out and I wake up wanting to inspire people no no no. that's not my objective i want to entertain but if i can inspire and if i can create a new lane and a new way of people to think so be it but it's just a subsequent of who i am it's an addition all right let me ask you last two questions and you can go Baby, uh-uh, baby. Mo, mo, baby, baby, tell them uh-huh. she's saying, Hey, I gotta go now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. some bums. Uh-huh. 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 No, no, this is too long. She's yeah. saying, This podcast is too long. <laughs> baby, I'm coming. This is no, John Savage. No, uh, this is too long. It's not your show. It's not my it's show, baby. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. All right, we're almost done. Yeah. All right, all right, I'll give you one then. All right. Cool. What is the thing um, from all 
of the people that you've admired and all of the guys you've like studied and now you know because you are a radio craftsman and what is the single thing that you think is the the, the inspirational lesson that you ha that you try to embody that you think is the heartbeat of what makes your show your show i'm not going to answer that i'm just going to tell you what i'm thinking now when you when you said that um okay cool so when i started my objective was not to do what has become but what i've realized in the shoes that i am is my job right now is to uplift and take everybody that is associated or involved in what i'm doing to the top so cool. if you look at my tra trajectory yeah if you look at my trajectory of the podcast like from 1000 to 10000 to 100000 right now i feel like whoever was a part of this journey i want to take them with me to 100000 to a million to whatever that's why if you if you watch the podcast religiously you'll see i'm always trying to have platforms where i can put other people on because for mm -hmm. the longest time no one wanted to take a risk on me no one wanted to put me on so you, you know? know what it's like to not be not get a chance exactly mm -hmm. and and that will supersede all the views it will supersede me as a person because john if you have a kid that's trying to rap but 5fm is not playing the music highfelds is not playing the music but he can come on my platform with the little subscribers that i have i put him on you will never forget that you will never forget yeah. that i put your kid on and that will supersede my it's, it's a legacy you get what i'm saying I totally it's not, even, it's, not even money, it's not even monetary value like what you're doing with the amp studios dog like there's kids that go there and record and who can be the next nasty c and they'll always say my first recording studio was at Ampt. That supersedes all the views we get when we post all the interviews you do because you're changing someone's life. Mm. You know, you're changing someone's life, and that has more impact than views and money. Because at the end of the day, dog, we have the tools and we are able to, yes, get fired from five, get fired from Highfeld, and still up. Uh, raise ourselves above the grain and still go to the top but now we have to show the people at the bottom how to get to the top and that's where our brilliance comes in because once you don't do that then you're selfish then everything that god has blessed you with is useless i know your lady is going to slaughter me but i'm going to have no, one no, more. no 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 let's keep going let's keep going don't worry about one it one more one more okay this is my last question and um the question is it's my own you know question. I'm, you know, you know what I'm saying. Let's keep going. This is the dopest interview I've done because not a lot of people do uh, podcasts with me. I always interview the the guest, but I want this to, I want whoever watches this because people see me as a, uh, you know, the podcast guy. I'm interviewing, I'm interviewing celebrities, or whatever, but they don't know what I think because when I do a, an interview, it's not about me. You know what I mean? It's about the guest. So I can never uh, push home my agenda, my views. So this is the one platform that I have where I can say to you, yo, John, this is what's happening. That's why the first thing I asked you is, hey, what happened with Zan? Because that's always been in the back of my mind. Because the same way you answered is the same way I feel. Like corporate has a disconnect with us people but they're trying to direct the messages to us people and that's what radio has lost radio is corporate bro and it used to be for the people yfm was the dopest shit ever because it was about the people and the advertisers came on because people the numbers advertisers chase numbers you understand 
Yeah, well, I mean, that's you, you're saying, you know, that's this hard lesson for me as well. It's a very, a brand is not a person. A brand, unfortunately, cannot do what a person can do. A brand's survival is based on the ability to survive, whereas a person won't die if they offend someone. A brand can die if they offend someone. And it's so weird. I, I'm not joking. Like Hearing me speak like this is a testament to what I've had to go through to be able to speak like this because um, not, not long ago, um, I'd be saying exactly what you're saying. Except, you know, I had my cock chopped off, my head chopped off, my arms chopped off, my legs chopped off, and I had to reprioritize everything I, that I thought I believed, but I still didn't kill the dream. I just realized, okay, that's where I want to go. These, this is the price I have to pay to get there. I realized, mm. like, I've only got so much energy. I want to spend it on the bigger vision and I'm happy to lose a few battles if I can just win the the war, you know. Yeah, and I want to work with you because I, I, I fuck, man, dude, I love what you're doing, bro. And this is the beauty yeah. of YouTube and Spotify is that what you're doing and what we're doing with this show, this show, we yeah. don't have to the fucking nobody. Exactly, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. The beauty in you is that yes, you are doing it, but we need a Tandi Samazwai to co-sign you. We need Kaifa Samania. We need Questa. We need all those people. Because when you go into that boardroom, you're alone. But if Questa comes in there, if mm. I come in there, if Fresh comes in there, whoever else comes in there, your voice is now louder. But you got you know what you gotta understand, John, is that everything started in that idea. You know how the Afrikaners, uh the Oppenheimers and the whatever uh gained power. You know what they did? Uh, not my game, that one. Getting power, not my game. <laughs> <laughs> they started, it all starts with a simple idea. It, they started with um, banks. They're like, you know what? Let's start a bank just for Afrikaners, right? So they kept their money within each other. And it got to a point where they gained so much money that they started buying out all these other things. And now... 200 years later, 100 years later, they are the Oppenheimers, Stellenbosch Mafia, whatever. But what I'm trying to say is that it started with an idea. So yes, the idea, the idea that I'm trying to enforce to you, which is why I keep bringing you back, seems foreign to you, but it needs to start somewhere. You know, And we're at a point right now where we don't realize our power. And I'll tell you why. There's a campaign that I was involved in. Ashamedly so. Kanyimba was involved in. SAB paid us money to say... Oh, I know about this. This is a yeah. travesty, bro. This is a fucking embarrassment. Yeah, I, I was just part of it. I didn't know that, but this is a big, a big fucking embarrassment for the world of, of advertising. Exactly. It showed me the power because for me, I was like, ah, oh, fuck, you're going to pay me 30K. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I'll tweet, whatever. I don't give a fuck. I want to get paid 20K, it's just one tweet. But it was the first time where I've been at the end of backlash from a tweet. Were you compromised I... out there? No, no, it didn't gain momentum. It was more on Kanyimba. No, but, she was... but I'm saying you compromised yourself by taking that deal. Yes, yes. Because I was like, oh, shit, it's 30K. Yeah. Fuck, let me, let me tweet. I don't give a fuck, you know? But I realized by the backlash, because I've never I've tweeted, like, if you follow me on Twitter, I don't tweet much. Whatever I have to say, I say on my show. On Twitter, I just say, hey, I did a, a podcast with John Savage. Here's the link. Check it out. I'm out. I don't never speak about my beliefs. What no, I'm saying bro, now. You're going to give me a swipe up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it was the first time I got backlash. That's when I realized, oh shit, because I'm thinking, yo, I'm not Kanyimba, bro. She's got millions of people. I just have 25,000, 20,000. What impact does it have? And I realized that actually this shit has an impact. And I could have told SAB, fuck you. 
No one gives about, no one cares about alcohol right now. People are losing their lives. Every single day, someone is dying. The last thing people are thinking about is the ban of alcohol. And their livelihoods, which, which is sometimes worse. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I didn't say that because I was thinking from oh. that point of view. Grand, right? You know what I mean? But but imagine now, Kanyimbao, that 150, 200K, however much they gave her, the damage is done. I, the credibility is gone. I mean, I, I want to just say this is, an, is um, completely up to you. I would love to include this section in the podcast because I think this is an important subject. Or, or is it? Or are you not comfortable? No, no, no. You can put. I don't know. You can put it up, dog. I'm, I'm not, everything I've said, Jay. You can put it up. I'm chill, bro. I'll, I'll say it on my podcast. I'll say it anyway because it's my values. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was a, it, that was a, you know, crazy. Uh, but I mean, I, to be honest, I, I throw it in your face a little bit because it's kind yeah, of, no. it's the same and situation as, the, as your interview at the Head of Mutual. 100%. When your livelihood is jeopardized or impacted, you don't think straight. And that's what I'm trying to say to you, John, is that if me, you, Kanyimbao, uh, all these people stand together and we are fighting for one cause, who are all these brands going to go to? Like, what I'm trying to say is that we have more power than we realize. Yeah. I, I understand when you walk into that meeting, you're minuscule. You don't matter because you're not making the final decisions. And you're just trying to uh, provide for your family, provide for your wife, uh, protect your livelihood, right? Mm. And I'm saying what we need to do, just like Mandela did, is sacrifice that for a greater goal because if we don't no one else with it's just going to be continuous until these guys realize that hey listen sharp you have the money you can sign off but do not disrespect or look uh, beyond the people that make what your brand is all about i agree with you but however the thing i don't agree with you is i think we're doing it you, you know I think, you know, the thing about Madiba was, was fucking sharp, man. And he was a diplomat. He knew when was the time to fight. And he knew when was the time to be smart. The way he fucking engineered F.W. de Klerk to sort of surrender was through respect, was through understanding his needs, understanding the environment, leveraging that environment. He didn't just go, fuck you. This is the way I want it. So you, know, you say like, I must channel the energy. So I'm saying you stick, you know, the idea of having a principle is important, but the strategy, you know, strategy is part of it. And and what so I'm saying is that drunk. no, guys, it's it's late. I think now we've wrapped it up. <laughs> it's good. You guys are bonded. That's nah. my girl. That's nah. my girl. Nah, 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 nah. I need him. I need him now. All right, Mac. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Speak to him. Hold on. <laughs> John, I I'm know sorry. you, John. You're the I, John I, that always takes him away from me. I need him now. It's late. <laughs> no, John. You, you got it from John Savage to John Late. John, it is late now. John, please ask her how Granger started the gin. Please ask no, her. No, 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 no. Not today. Not today. Well, this, there isn't going to be. I don't think you'll allow us to have another interview. So let's just please get it out now. Please ask her. Please ask her. <laughs> What is the story behind the gin? Because it's please, please I love I love it. I really love that it the way that you guys have done it and I admire it. Please tell it, please tell it. I don't even know where to start, but the inception of it essentially he went to 947 because he was still working there at the time. Ah, uh -uh, you're lying, baby. So this Sorry is what happened. That. This is what happened, right? So I'm like, ish, baby. Hey, let uh, her talk. I've heard enough of you. I want to hear. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> then there's that. So essentially, him and I were having a conversation for like about a month. We're mm. trying to figure out how do we get rich? How do we bust out of the whole thing of like, you know, working for other people? How do we make it? And mm. the entire month, we're trying to figure it out. We come up with different ideas, but nothing was working. 
And we could tell that like it wasn't learning. You know when you come up with ideas, we'd be like, me, no, no, give no. Me, give me an example of one of the bad ideas you came up with. Cleaning service. Car wash okay. app. Car wash. We we came, right. I came up with an idea for a car wash app for elite cars, only like Ferraris and, cool. and Lamborghinis and stuff. But that's not enough to make the type of money we need. <laughs> right. Right on. Right on. <laughs> so then as time went by we let it go and we're just like okay cool let's chill and go about our lives the idea will come when it comes and then one day when he went to work he was still working at nine for seven i don't know why you disputed that but he was still working there he left me on a saturday night and bear in mind saturday back then there was no lockdown no corona you could drink until until you could have a vibe until until so we're vibing and everything is nice. And he has a uh, 10 p.m. show, ne? Mm. block party. Mm. He had a block party show at 947 and he's about to leave. And when he leaves me while we're drinking the whole day, he leaves me with this amount of alcohol. <laughs> this little, literally two glasses and, left. And you stayed with him? That's on you. <laughs> You know what I mean? Sometimes I even question myself, like, how dare you? Did you not want better for yourself, DJ? <laughs> <laughs> but I stayed, I stayed, I stayed. I was like, you know what? This guy's a smart guy. He'll figure something out. So then, cool. He leaves for work, and I stay at home. But what happened after that was the inception of Grandeur Gin. Because what happened was while he was at work, and now it's an hour later, He's about to link and I send him a text because while he was away, he doesn't realize that the alcohol he left me with was so little that I needed another drink. And I was buzzing at the time because he taught me that thing. Yeah, he taught me that thing that like, yo, what, when, whenever you're driving alone or drinking alone, that's the best time to come up with ideas. So I was drinking alone now because he's left me. And now I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I need another drink, but I can't have one. What must happen? And that's when I was like, oh my word, we need to produce our own alcohol so that we never run out. So then I call him same time. I don't even care whether he's on or, you know, whatever hashtag is going to trend. If he misses a link, I call him instantly and he's about to link at nine for seven. I'm like, babe, I just realized that we cannot be buying alcohol from anyone else. We need to make our own gin. And I was like, right. and oh, shit. So there's the genius in your, there's the genius in the Mac G empire sitting next to you, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I own all the royalties, guys. Everything. All of it. <laughs> Dude, so, I was like, oh, shit. I was but hang on a second. There is a very big difference, you know. Every like there are a lot of people who would say let's make our own gin. There are a handful of people who would actually do it. How the hell did you actually do that? So essentially, he called me back. He's like, "Babe, what the fuck are you saying?" I'm like, "Listen, I feel like we can make our own gin." So the beauty about us is that I am an avid lover of research, which just works with him. So as mm. soon as he said, how do we do it? Figure out how we do it and we'll make it. I started researching that minute. I researched everything. Where do we do it? Whether it's in South Africa or out the country, how do we do it? Where do we get the bottles? Everything. I found everything within six hours. And the next morning, we knew how to do it in South Africa or not. And that was the beauty of it. Wow. And, and then I went, because uh, I was still employed, Hey, I'm not interested in your story, Mac. Hand the mic back. I've got the answers of everything you need, just so you know. Whatever you want to know about him, ask me. Don't ask him. Finish the story. This is the gin is your baby. I want to hear the rest yeah. of the story from you. I kid you not, bro. And then I went, uh, because I was still employed. I got a loan for 200, 300 k yeah, two. 200 k we printed our first bottles. I did this on Canva. The bottles if you go on are Canva, you can still find this logo. You did it, it on just Canva. Canva. Oh, wait. I've got the old bottle. Let me show you. I want to say hallelujah to Canva. Like <laughs> the fact that you fucking did it on Canva, that speaks to my heart. I only work, <laughs> I only work on free apps. Like my this whole is the life. first bottle. This is the you first bottle me? of Grand I kid you not. If you go on Canva, 
There wow. we go. You you find this on Canva. There's a logo like this. It took me five minutes. Len gave me the name. Put in the light. I can't see it exactly. It's it's quite dark. Just yeah. There we go. Oh, and the, and the, go up. Wow. Okay. Shit. Yeah. On Canva, there's a logo like this, and on the white bottle, we changed it a little bit because my woman is like, "Yo, people have this logo." <laughs> Amazing. So, what? Wh yeah. When did you start? Wh when did this start? Uh, twenty eighteen. After yeah, I got after I got let go at nine four seven. That's when the podcast started and everything, bro. And what kind of units are you shifting? Oh, can't you speak about that? Like, what? No, well, no, I, I don't yeah, know about the industry, so I don't. I don't know if it's I, if you tell me it's good or bad. I have no idea. Nah, our units aren't that great, man. We just push units from people that listen to the podcast because uh, it's tough to get into retail and distribution because it's predominantly white owned so if you don't Bro, have we... hey why don't we talk? why don't we talk yeah less bro i'm trying to get into macro spot uh, please tell him how hard it is as a black person i got an yeah, idea no, yeah no we've been trying and i don't know like at this point i even said to mom like baby let me just fuck one person <laughs> Hi, baby <laughs> let's just you know what i mean <laughs> And then we're in, in. You'll forgive me. It's okay. You know what? When this bottle starts flying, bro, you'll forget that ever happened, I'm sure. Yes! <laughs> you'll forgive me. <laughs> He's the um, Cape baby. Not me. He's the right now. I, I'm not the guy. You fuck me, you'll get nothing out of me. I can't help you. <laughs> Dude, we're in Cape Town. It's fucking amazing. We're by Hood Bay. Hood Bay, isn't it? Hout Bay. Hout Bay. Oh, man. It's amazing. I love yes. Cape Town. All right, John. Let me go make some more babies, man. Listen, guys. Yes. Both of you, I appreciate you lending me your man. You but see Mac, him. Can you hear me, baby? No, I can, yeah. I can you can hear. Yeah. I, but to you, I just want to say to you, Mac, I'm a huge fan of your work. I love working with you. You are a pioneer. The fact that I'm honored to be working, doing the stuff that we're doing. I try not to be difficult, but I know that it's hard. And no, I really respect, I'll tell you this. I had so much respect and admiration for you before we did this show. And I hope everyone who listens and I hope your fans listen to this because getting to know you, this is the first ever real conversation we've had. Yeah. Whenever I, whenever I whenever phone you, I'm this is what I want. But getting to know you really um, exclamation marks to me the artist that you are. It reveals the truth behind what makes you great. And I believe you are truly one of a kind. I truly I, I think you are a megastar in the making and I'm I'm honored to be working with you really I, it's and you obviously got a strong woman right next to you and uh, this is my rock my life this one. also you must know he has a thing that we both have which is low key whenever it's like 15 minutes past an interview he gives me a single a signal and I know that like I know baby it's over he's like yeah no baby distract me it's late <laughs> you guys went for three hours <laughs> couldn't do shit in I my was up there in the backgrounds he didn't care it's the first <laughs> interview he's ever done that with can i just say in my defense i accidentally didn't record the first hour so <laughs> it makes sense now i get it yeah. <laughs> no i love you long time john love you long guys time, man. go and fuck i love you bye <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>